Many of our most well-known thrushes don't have the word thrush in their common names, including our three species of bluebirds, eastern, mountain, and western. Neither does the best-known no-thrush thrush, the American robin. But all our thrushes give away their affinities through shared characteristics like large eyes, straight, medium-sized bills, and spotted juvenile plumage. Whether they are called thrushes or not, the family is noted for its songs, which tend to be rich, fluty, and lovely. The wood thrush is a fine example. The varied thrush, which breeds in dense coniferous forests of the Pacific Northwest, looks like a robin that's had a makeover. It has a bold black eye mask, a swoop of black across its orange breast, and ragged orange wing bars on its dark wings. Its song is simultaneously beautiful and eerie. The Townsend Solitaire, found throughout much of the Mountain West, looks a bit like a northern mockingbird, but is decidedly more mellow in temper. In Alaska and parts of the Canadian Arctic, you might encounter the handsome northern weed ear, a species more associated with the Old World. Also just reaching Alaska from Asia are beauties like the blue throat, and more rarely, the Siberian ruby throat, two of our hardest to find thrushes. Other rare thrushes include some tropical cousins of the American robin, the rufous-backed and clay-colored robins. You'll generally need to visit southern Arizona or Texas, or point south, to see thrushes like these. If there is a prototypical North American thrush, it would have to be one of the members of the genus Catharus, cryptically plumaged denizens of shady forest understory, possessed of ethereal voices that broadcast their identities far more obviously than their rather uniform appearances. Our species include the Viri, as well as the Swainsons, Bicknells, Gray-cheeked, and Hermit thrushes. The Viri which tends to be rather rufous-toned, without much spotting below, has a song that spirals downward. The song of the Swainson's thrush climbs in pitch, and does so in a somewhat jerky, lurching manner. The gray cheek thrush gives a complex jumble of notes, descending in pitch. It's suggestive of a viri, but thinner and more nasal. The Bicknell's thrush, which breeds in a small area of the northern Appalachians, is in all respects similar to the gray cheeked, but its song rises in pitch at the end. The hermit thrush's clear, flute-like song consists of three or four phrases at different pitches, each with a distinctive, long, introductory note. As intricate and lovely as thrush songs are, Slowing them down allows us to hear even more of their Baroque structure. Here's a wood thrush at normal speed. Now, the same song slowed down by two-thirds. Including as it does many of our very finest singers, some spectacular rarities, and old friends like bluebirds and robins, the thrush family charms birders both casual and committed.